Ms. Lindsay, you say that after years of lies from your mother and uncertainty about who your father is, you believe you finally found him. Yes, Your Honor. You say everyone in town, including his family, knows Mr. Dannenbrink is your father and you intend to prove that today. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Mr. Dannenbrink. Yes, Your Honor. You admit to having a sexual relationship with Ms. Lindsay's mother, but say there is no way you're her biological father. That's right, Your Honor. I met her and uh, we just had like a hit and run situation. Uh, she disappeared on me and then we got back together again and a couple of days later she went, went her way and it just kept on for years that way. And there's no way she could be my daughter, Your Honor. So, Ms. Lindsay, wh what do you mean everyone in town knows that he's your father? What do you mean well, by your that? Well, Your Honor, okay, so uh, about 35 years ago, my mom does admit to having a child with Mr. Danabrink. And... Um, How many years ago? About 35, around okay. there. Okay. And when I was about 16 years old, an ex of Mr. Danabrink's came to my house and accused me of being the child that they had had together. And when I had asked my mother about that, she told me, no, that it wasn't true. You were 16? Yes. And an ex of Mr. Dannenbrink's comes to your house? Yes. And says, you're the child that your mother had with Mr. Dannenbrink? Yes, Your Honor. In other words, the ex thinks you're the child that came in between yes. her and Mr. Dannenbrink? Yes, Your Honor. When she said this to you, uh -huh. what did you say? <laughs> well, at first I was like, what? You're wrong. There's no way. And um, I came to my mother and I talked to her about it and she told me no, that he was not my father, that um, another man that she had told me was my dad was my dad. She said this other man is your father, but you'd never met that man. No, I still haven't. So I don't know who that is. Okay, proceed. So about four or five years ago, we all pretty much met up again in church and um, I knew that Mr. Danabrink was the person that I had thought, or at least was accused of being the child of, but I was too nervous to approach him for um, pretty much rejection. And so I just left it alone. And then um, my mother and him had started talking again and we became more close, I guess you would say. Um, we lived right next door to each other and we started having barbecues together and spend a few holidays together and things like that. The man next door, your neighbor. Yes. You believe he's your biological father. Yes. But you've never said anything to him. Not really. Wow. Uh, Miss Hampton. Yes. What was right. the nature of the relationship with Mr. Dan and Brink? Were you just dating, well, committed? Your Honor, this was like in the late 70s and we dated off and on and I was involved with somebody else and he was involved with somebody else. Five years ago, we met back up and started having conversation and uh, platonic relationship. We're best of friends. So, Mr. Dan and Brink, did you know about the pregnancy? I did not, Your Honor. She never told me that she was pregnant. She never told me I even had a child. You didn't Your tell Honor, him you, you, you were Your pregnant? Honor, I had no reason to tell him because he's not the father. So you were confident of that? Yes, I am 100%. But were you sleeping with Mr. Dannenbrink during the window of conception? Not as far as I know. I, I believe that I got pregnant between <laughs> June and July. What are you holding, Ms. Lindsay? I'm holding a calendar. Jerome, will you please hand me her evidence? Thank you. You're welcome. What is this calendar this outline? Cal this calendar shows, um, for one, the day that I was born, and if you count back, um, if I was born full term, the conception would be between May and June. And um, the doctors did say that I was born um, a month premature, which puts my due date at March 11th, which my mother would be right at that time. However, I had no health problems when I was born. I was born at a normal weight. No, and you, Your Honor, Your Honor, she was born at five and a quarter pounds. All she of your was, children have been small. She was premature. Mr. Dannenbrink? Yes, Your Honor. Do you agree with the date set forth on this calendar? I really can't, couldn't tell you because back then it was hectic. I mean, it, it I was, had so much going on. That it was I, hectic? Yes. It was back in the 70s, so I'm sure you, you understand what... No, I was just a kid <laughs> then, so... <laughs> I did a lot of uh, drugs back then, so I really couldn't tell you. Oh, 
Oh, so hectic has many levels. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, so Honor. physically and mentally hectic. Yes, Your Honor. So is it safe to say there was a lot of sex going on during that time? Yes, Your Honor. Much of which you may not have a full recollection. Correct, Your Honor. How long did your sexual relationship with Miss Hampton last? Uh, we got together. We were together for maybe a couple of weeks, and then she disappeared. And then we meet again a few years later. So it was like that. So you all just were kind of uh, sex partners. Yes. Just Correct, Your Honor. Whatever. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. I don't know. What's the word? Friends with benefits. Friends with benefits. But were y'all yes. friends? I don't even get the friend part here. Yeah. <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks. Bump and go. Bump and go. Yeah. Okay, Jerome. <laughs> 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 Is that a legal term that we just created just here created in maternity yeah. court? <laughs> okay. So, Ms. Lindsay, your mother's saying that Mr. Dannenbrink is not your biological father. Right. That's what right. leads you to, to just to not believe your mother? The doctors did say that I was born a month early, but they also said that I was going to be a boy the entire time she was pregnant with me. So they could have been wrong. Um, second thing, my mom does admit to having a child with Mr. Danabrink. Um, throughout my life, though, the dates have kind of changed a little bit. Um, I remember at one time it was that she was an older sister. Then I remember at another time she was a younger sister than me. And um, she was stillborn at birth. Your, your Hold honor. on now. Your honor. Wait a minute. So you're, you, you've been told a story yes. by your mother that she did have a child with Mr. Dannenbrink. Yes. You were told this child passed away. Yes, at birth. Yes. At your birth. Honor. Yes, Your Honor. I had a stillborn. And was that Mr. Dannenbrink's child? Yes, yes Your Honor. She or... never said nothing to me about that. No. So... I admit that. I did not. You never mentioned it to him? No. Miss Lindsay, I'm looking at your face. It doesn't seem like you're believing a lot of your mother's testimony. I don't. Why? She says that she had this child. Um, I've never seen the papers, although I've asked a few times. And on top of that one, I've went to the public um, records place. There's no proof of her birth or death. I don't know why there wouldn't be any record of, of her birth and death, but I do have an autopsy report have you seen this report? No. What I don't understand, Ms. Lindsay, is why would your mother lie about this? Because it's not the first time. <laughs> uh, she didn't technically lie about another brother, but she didn't tell me about another brother. Um, she got pregnant and gave um, him up for adoption. It went through social media that he found me, and I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? You're not my brother. And I called my mom at that time, and I said, um... I have another brother? And she's like, oh, well, I thought he died. And I was like, what? And, um... W wait a minute, you thought he died? It was complicated, Your Honor. Um, I had gotten pregnant by a man that was married, not knowing that he was married. The agreement was that he was going to take the baby because I financially and mentally could not handle having another baby. But you thought he had passed away? Yes, Your Honor, because that's what my mother and the doctors had told me. So, Ms. Lindsay, even if we have several stories that lead us to believe maybe your mother is not being completely forthright... Right. Why? What is her motivation? What is the reason why she would lie and say, Mr. Dannenbrink is not your biological father, if he could be? I don't know. I'm not my mom, so I don't know exactly what goes through her head. Um, I have children, and I, I don't lie to any of them, so I don't understand why. Are you at would. the point now I... where you just feel like you've caught your mom into so in so many lies that you don't even know yeah, why she lies? You just know she does. No, Your Honor, I don't. So, what was your childhood like growing up? All of these stories. What is this like for you? Um, it, very crazy as a child. Um, I had a big hole and I filled it with a lot of things that probably weren't the right things to fill it with. Um, I'm still searching for that, um, that father figure. Um, I, I had a stepdad at one point that abandoned me as well, so. And so you had a relationship. Yes. With your stepfather. For a small time until he had the, his own child with my mom. And then I, I still was the, step, the stepchild. 
So. And so you're basically alone in all of this. Kind of, sort of. I mean, I had my friends um, for, for a small time, which is kind of funny. Um, I had one friend that was like my best friend and mm -hmm. it just happened to be his son. <laughs> Wait, that, that, that could potentially be your brother. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you all were good friends. Yes. Just friends, I hope. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> that goes through my head, yes. trust and believe me. Not oh. knowing exactly who my dad is, it does go through my head as to which ones I've dated might have been. So, <laughs> it's, I just try not to think about that. <laughs> wow, yeah. That, I mean, listen. <laughs> You know, we can chuckle about it, but the truth is, if you don't know who your father is... Right. ...you could have dated your brother. Yes. And it's just that simple. Yeah. And so, you have a photo that you've submitted to the court. Yes. That is his son and myself. Do you see a resemblance? A little bit. Just a little? Yeah, because, I mean, I do look like my mom a lot. Mr. Dannenbring, do you see a resemblance? I do not, Your Honor. Okay, so, Ms. Lindsay, what's your relationship like with Mr. Dan and Brink right now? I want to say he's kind of like a father figure to a point. Um, it, we kind of joke about him being my dad and him and me being his daughter. How do you joke about it? Just randomly, like, people will say, oh, you guys look alike or something like that and things like that. Or he'll say, oh, good morning, my beautiful daughter or something. And I've never had that before, so that's good. Does he know your children? Yes. All four of my children, um, they don't have grandpas that are alive. So he has graciously told my children that they're more than welcome to call him grandpa. Oh. That's right. And they do. <laughs> You've submitted a letter to the court mm -hmm. about how much this truly hurts you. Will you please read that letter? Yes, I can. Um, I said, 35 years, I have walked through this life wondering who I am. Um, whose blood runs through me? Who do I look like? Where do I get my eye color from? Where do I get my nose? These are just a few questions that have plagued my mind. The worst ones, though, are the ones that still hurt me. The questions like, why did you leave? Did you even know about me? If you did, would it have even changed anything? And would you have been proud of me? Why was I not good enough? Take your time, honey. <sighs> From the moment that I couldn't remember, I've always really wanted just my dad. That was honest and true and real and plain. Yeah. You know, as I sit in this chair day after day, a lot of times people will say, well, it's gone on 30-something years. I mean, why aren't you past this? When I say it was honest and true and simple and plain, because it was, it was the spirit of a child and it is your inner child. It's that child in you that still does not have the pieces to her puzzle as she deserves. And that child is gonna live on and live on and she's gonna want those answers and need those answers. And when you hear those words, mom, does it hurt you to hear? Oh, well, yes, your honor, it does but I still stand firm that Mr. Dannenbrink is not her dad. And Mr. Dannenbrink, when you heard those words, I see how emotional you are. Yeah. What are you feeling in this moment? I um, don't think she is my daughter, but I'm um, hoping she is. <laughs> That's beautiful. I think it's time for the results, Jerome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Lindsay versus Dannenbrink, when it comes to 35-year-old Bobby Lindsay, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Dannenbrink, you are not her father. Sorry. Sorry. It doesn't matter. She's still, I consider her my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> How
How are you feeling, Miss Lindsay? I know this was difficult for you. Confused, but I'm happy at the same time for cl closure on that part. Miss mm -hmm. Hampton. Yes, ma'am. I have to ask you, do you know who your daughter's biological father is? I still stand firm that it's another person. He would admit to photographs because he's seen photographs of, of her through my mother, but physically he would not admit it. Do you know where he is? No, Your Honor, I don't. Do you have any way to find out? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Beto, you say you were furious when the defendant asked you for a DNA test on your seven-month-old daughter, Ileana. Yes. Now you claim that request has broken up your happy home. <laughs> Mr. Bolton, you state you have reason to believe Ms. Beto's child may not be your biological daughter. You say you are desperate to discover the truth because you've already grown to love her as your own. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bolton, this is not your first time in this courtroom. No, sir. Here's what happened previously. So how convinced are you now that Mr. Bolton is? I'm very convinced, because I only slept with three men at that time. If he is mine, I will step forth and do 100, 110%, even better. I actually got myself involved in this young man's life. Most men wouldn't. I'm actually taking him on the weekends when it's available. When it comes to four-year-old Micah, Mr. Bolton, you are not his father. Mr. Bolton, so what has happened since you were last here? This is the last time I was in court. And I was very devastated to find out the news about the young boy not being mine. But in the same sense, I was happy because Ms. Beetle was pregnant with a child. So child was supposed to be mine. See, Your Honor, here's the thing. When the baby was born, I cut the umbilical cord, the doctors wiped the baby off, and they gave Miss Beto the baby at first. She was still fatigued from delivering birth. Understandably. So they gave me the baby. The doctor that uh, gave the procedure to deliver the baby, he handed me the baby and he looked at me. He said, are you sure this baby's yours? <laughs> and I looked what? at the doctor, I looked at the doctor, I'm like, what do you mean? He said, because this baby's white. I'm looking at him like, what do you mean this baby's white? Jerome, so, have you ever heard of such? But That's a first for me. This is the reason. This is the reason. Let here. me see your evidence. That's a picture this of... Is the, this is a picture of Ileana when she was first born. And when the doctor made that comment, this is the reason why we're here right there. Okay, Your Honor, let me just say this. We are... Uh, uh, that was stupid. We're mixed. I'm Dominican and black. He's Puerto Rican and black. People in my family have different color eyes. My eyes are hazel. My father's eyes are green. He told me that when he was a young boy, when he was a, a baby, as a matter of fact, his eyes were blue and then they turned green. So I don't see where the doubt is. The doubt began because people continuously said, oh, she's white. Oh my God, she's so white. Oh, she's so white. What's wrong with that? Well, when the doctor asked you... Look, if that... You know, before congratulations, are you sure this is your child? That's doubt. That's they doubt. She mine, I know. She his, I know. But that's what I'm saying. For the father, that can be overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. But you have to know your mate. And if you know that you have a loyal, faithful, loving woman, then anything anybody say... So, Mr. Bolton, did you other. know you had a loving faithful, loyal woman. I did, but that's the relationship. I mean, if you look at the baby, the baby's... Man, the baby's white. So, Why? until Doesn't you like were me. in the delivery room, you had no doubts about Ms. Beto. You didn't no, feel I, like she was cheating. I didn't have any doubts until the first. The doctor said something. When we brought Ileana home from the hospital, we had friends and family come over to see the baby and looking at the baby like, oh, she's beautiful, she's beautiful. Is she yours? <laughs> That's not what they said, Your Honor. What they were saying, maybe on his side, but my side, they did make some comments. But of course, I defended. That's my daughter, you know? Yep. So I see him all the time in her. I see a little bit of my features, but mostly I see him. Your Honor, maybe two weeks when Eliana came home, the same boss that we work for, we both work for him, he came to the house and brought a stroller to the home as a gift. 
And he's from Alabama, you know, he's you know, country guy, you know. But he looked at the baby, and he's like, Rico, is this baby yours? I look at him like, what you mean? He says, this is baby's whack. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, wow. So now the doctor, your family members, people and your public, boss yeah, people are all just openly asking you. Yeah, is this baby mine? Even when I go to the grocery store, Your Honor, when I go to the grocery store, they're looking at me, oh, it's a beautiful baby, she's gorgeous. Is she yours? And it's only because she's the skin color, the blue eyes, you know, it's like, wow, but. But how come I mean, nobody say that when I'm around? Even still, you know, this is, this, this has like happened before in my life. This, this, this situation here is like, when I was young, I was dating a stripper and she had a baby, all right? She disappeared. What reason, I don't know, but when she finally came back, we figured out that baby wasn't mine. Got my name off the birth certificate, finally. Second time this has happened in my life, a young lady got pregnant, but come to find out, she was dealing with somebody that I knew. She didn't know we knew each other. She got pregnant, we talked, we, me and the guy, we talked, and we trying to find out what's going on. She got abortion immediately because she didn't know who the father was. And the third time was when I came on the court to find out the DNA test from Micah and find out he wasn't mine. So it's like, I have strong reason to get a DNA test to figure out what's going on. So in your lifetime, three times... Yes, ma'am. ...someone has claimed you're the father of their child. Yes, ma'am. But you weren't. I wasn't. And now you're here again. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So, Ms. Beto, you tell me you're a faithful, loyal woman, and I have no reason at this point not to believe you. He hasn't presented any testimony that would say otherwise. However, I have to ask you, during the last couple years, how old is Ileana? She's seven months. Last year and a half or so, have you slept with anybody else? Um, we actually broke up last year around August. And it was due to infidelity on his behalf. Well, Your Honor, she was accusing and... me the whole time that I was cheating. I got a couple of buddies he that was. I hang out with before. I got a couple of buddies I hang out with. They do things on the side. Your Honor, now, I saw the texts from the females. With that, being with them, I'm getting accused daily. So it's like I felt like I was pressured, getting pushed to the point where I should cheat just to make you happy. Because <laughs> this is what you're doing. You put pressure on me. That was your logic? Yes. That was, that, I mean, that was my logic, because every day she's saying, hey, you're a cheater, you're a cheater. So look, I cheated, I did, and I meant to that. She left. She, she left. She wanted to go stay your with her Your Honor, he didn't admit to cheating. I saw the texts from the female, all right? And I confronted him like a woman should. Is, is she I, I'm text? gonna confront. I'm gonna confront. And when I found the information, and me and the woman, we also talked, because I she... believe that a man will lie to you. Well, anyone that's gonna play that deceitful role is gonna make you believe whatever. So I talked to the woman, and I yeah. believe her. But and she, I gave him a chance when to she tell left, his she, story. She left, she had sex with I gave him an op That's you know, right. Man. I did and sleep so... with somebody, but I did it the right way. I left you first. I was single. <laughs> hey, well, Yana. And during the time you broke up and you left him, did you sleep with someone else yes, without I using protection? I did, I did, I did. And let me tell you, it wasn't like that. I left him and it wasn't like, oh, hey, I'm single, let's go party, you know? It was more like I was hurt. It had been a month later. I just went out hanging out, and um, one thing led to another. I saw a guy I liked, but we actually slept yeah. together twice. Yeah, the first time was unprotected, the second time was protected, and after that, as a matter of fact, um, I spoke to him after that, but we never yeah, had any type of relationship or anything. She wasn't answering my phone calls for a while. After, you know, I, Why should I, I? I cheated on her, okay? So now we're working on something, trying to get back together. When we finally get back together, this is when she's admitting that, yeah, I slept with somebody. Your Honor. Because at first she says, none of my business, I want to go see her. Exactly. Now, she, now she's telling me out of mouth, okay, Your this Honor, is what happened. Your Honor, he continues so to back me about it. She's admitted in open court mm -hmm. that she slept with someone else one time at least was without protection. Right. And Mr. Bolton, you believe that this man could be the father. Yeah. When she came back together, we, we got together. We moved back in the same house together. But in the midst of this, she's still going out there to her family's house, doing their hair, coming back home. And guess what? Middle of the night, I pick up the phone, text messages from this guy. So I have reason to believe, like, okay, you tell me you stop messing with him, I still think that you're still with him. You saw still text messages. Your Honor, he saw text I mean, messages even... from the guy. He never saw me respond. 
It even goes to the point like and this. Then I did. She, del she delete pictures out the phone. You know what I'm saying? Because when you plug a, a, a phone into a laptop, the USB charger, the backup pictures are still in the phone. Pictures of him and his baby are still there together. So I'm like, whoa, this, what's going on? Oh, pictures of him and... His baby. And his baby yeah. are in her phone. In her phone. And it looks like this. His daughter looks like my daughter. So... I mean, but how often is it that babies can look alike? But, but Your Honor, <laughs> I just want to show you this evidence right here. Let me see that evidence, sir. But I don't think she looks like the other man's baby. Okay. That's Eliana, and that's me. Eliana's pink, Caucasian, white, and you see me. Really? I'm brown, no blue eyes. I mean, the only thing I see is a nose. If he felt like that, Your Honor, why stay for seven months? Why? even take care of her? Why sign the birth certificate? Yeah, Why is it that every time I call you, you run to her? <laughs> if you felt like that, you should have been said that. You don't yeah, wait Anna. seven months later and then tell somebody like that. We supposed to get married and everything. What you mean? Yeah, but When you he are... told me that, we were in the bed and the first thing he said to me is, oh, you know, I love you, right? Like, you know somebody gonna say something messed up after they say something like that. And then after that, I don't even know how we got to it. All I know is he was like, oh, I don't think she's mine. I want a DNA test. And yeah, I lost it and I wanted him to get out. So we got to Look, arguing no, and I was like, either me, I'm gonna leave out. or you're gonna leave. Yeah, you're right. I she did kick you out because I told him either I'm gonna leave and go to my family, which is far from them. He was like, no, I don't, I, I don't want y'all to be that far from me, but she not yours, right? You do understand that after you admitted you slept with somebody else, that fueled his doubts. I understand that. But you can't always be moved, Your Honor, by what other people say. You have to stand upon what you see as a person. A lot of people felt like he wouldn't make it, we wouldn't make it, we wouldn't be okay. And yeah, we're going through something right now, and even him as a person, people felt like they didn't believe in him, but I believe in him. I believe in him still to this day. I believe that, you know, he is a good man and he is a good person. Your Honor, when I first asked about the DNA test, she was really, like, really upset. Yeah, she I went She did crazy. kick me out, she did do that. But since I'm staying at other places, I come home to the house, just check on my daughter, make sure everything's okay. She tells me, put her down if you don't think she's yours, okay? Yeah, so of I'm course. Like, Every time I I'm see like, your face, I'm gonna get mad. I'm, like, I'm mad now. Why did you get upset? <laughs> I'm just saying, she's, she's a loyal though. female, like she said earlier. If it was such of a problem, why did you catch an attitude when I asked for a DNA test and you knowing that I went to court last time? Who wouldn't have an attitude when you know for a fact that you've been faithful? Hey. Why not? Let me look okay, at you. Okay, so, fine. Ms. Beto, it's not just about you being faithful. You have to take a person along with their life experience. That's... So... Who, no, no, hold on. When you're in a relationship, that's how people come. Everybody has their own baggage. Or as my, my granny used to say, that's his red wagon. And you got that. your own red I wagon. I understand that, Your That's Honor. the things you pulling behind you when you that. come into a relationship. I'm not saying that is right, Ms. Beto, yeah. but I'm telling you that is real. I understand that, Sean. Here's the thing, right? When she left, her and this other guy was messing around. When she came back around, we was living together, okay? And I feel like, you know, maybe she's still been messing with this guy. Because all of a sudden, like she said, we've been together five years. It's the first time she ever got pregnant. She's coming back around, boom, baby. I'm like, what's going on? All right, so, so the that... timing felt strange to you as well. Yes, ma'am. So... I've witnessed so much emotion, and, and that's because I know the stakes are really high today. You even submitted a video, and uh, it really shows how committed he is to her. <laughs> what she want to say? Say hello. Bye-bye. See y'all later. I love Eliana. Ever since she was born, you know, I always been there. From the time she got pregnant, the day in labor, the hospital. Now, I just really want to be a father to, to this child here. I've been there since day one. The baby You're shower. You're worried, still. I, I am. Just because, yeah, my past and, you know, just... And the last time you were in like court? like science. The last time I was in court, I mean, you know, came out not yours. But the signs are there, so many people saying it. I need to be sure. And that's, that's, that's what's so heartbreaking about this situation. I understand about people's past. Everybody has a past. Stop pushing rewind. Stop making other people pay for what other women did. I'm not, a, I'm not those women. <laughs>
if I was like that, then I shouldn't be with anybody because just like you hurt me and think about the five years we've been together, Mr. Bolton, the things that you've done to me before this, that wasn't the only infidelity, but every time you have a doubt, here I am proving myself. Why you signed the birth certificate? Why did you stay so long and then turn around and say, oh, she's not mine? Do you have any idea how that hurts? Of course I'm gonna flip out. Mm. I don't hurt you like that. And even when you hurt me, you know that I find the strength to still say something to encourage. Wow. <laughs> Whose choice is it ultimately? It's his choice. Yep. And who has to do that work? He does. Exactly. So let's get to the results because the truth is always a great starting point. Está bien? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Beto v. Bolton, when it comes to the paternity of Ileana Bolton, and as to whether Mr. Bolton is her biological father, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Bolton, You are her father. Oh, uh, que yo dice? But what I tell you? Your Honor, can I ask Ms. Bilo a question? Yes, you may. But you don't got no questions for me. Everything speaks for itself, because that's what you told me. Oh. Actions. Oh. <laughs> gotta say yes. Lola, Bilo. We married me. Yes. Uh, Ms. Rubin, you and your sister are here today because you say that the defendant, Mr. Davis, the man you've always been told was your dad, is now stating that he is not your biological father. You say his actions are motivated by greed and he has torn your family apart. Mr. Davis. You claim you have legitimate reasons to deny paternity and claim to be a good man with grave concerns for the Rubens' well-being. Uh, all right, Ms. Rubin, when did the defendant start denying he was your father? He always denied me. He always treated me differently. I mean, it's, I mean, I just feel like he never treated me fair. With my brother and sister, he will bring things around. Like, a Chris, one Christmas, he bring a whole bunch of toys around, get them toys on top of toys, and then tell them, oh, play with your sister. Never brought me anything, always treated me differently. It's just, he never showed no love towards me. I'm always the one that was begging for his love when he was just giving all his love to both of them. And I felt like that was wrong. And how did you feel about it? I didn't like it at all, because that was my little sister. I mean, we all his kids. Why he just won't do for her, but do for and us? And you noticed this. You could see this as a child. Yeah. Now, Mr. Davis, is this true? Yes, We're... it is. It is? It is. That's a shame. And okay. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why, Your Honor. Yes, please. The do. reason why I treated Cheryl the way I treated her, because her mother slept around. You was a liar. Your mother did sleep around. Okay, okay, first of all, neither one of you all was in there when it started, okay? She had three kids before I met her. Okay, she had you three, you supposedly she had you three with first. me. Jeanette. And now was, she has how many more after me? I did a grand total of 13. Come on, you ain't did nothing kids. anyways. You Ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, in order for me to be able to understand what has happened, I have to be able to hear what has happened. And I can't understand you when you're all talking Excuse over one another. Right, yeah. Mr. You're Davis, right. you believe their mother had slept around and exactly. was unfaithful to you. Exactly. You were in a relationship at exactly. the time. Which caused you to then doubt whether or not you were her father in particular. Not necessarily her. All the children? You're correct, you're correct. Okay, did you express this concern to her? No, I didn't express it to her. You no. just always kept it to yourself? I kept it to myself. Mr. Davis, I need to know from you whether mm. you ever were in all of their lives as a father. Were no. you ever just there? No. Were you talking to me? I was talking to you. Then shut up. Now you oh, shut no, up. no, 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 no. You shut up. Yeah. Mr. Not Davis, first of all, I control this courtroom. Now, you can take it to the street and you'll be out on the street. Cause we're not gonna act a fool in here. 
Now you came to get some answers. And I'm going to try to give it to you. Don't think for one minute that I am minimizing the pain and the anguish and the the absolute frustration that I see all of you feel. But unless you give each other a chance to talk, we cannot get down to the facts. You want answers, you got to let them talk. Might not be what you want to hear, but at least you know. What would make a man go to the store and get toys for two of three children and walk into a house and disappoint a child for no reason? You should have brought her a toy if she wasn't your child, if she was your enemy's child. She, you should have brought her something because she's a child. Mm -hmm. That's what I want you to try to explain to this court. As I said before, the mother slept around. She slept okay. around. When we first got together, when I first met her, she was working at a restaurant. That's when I first spotted her. Of course, being the man that I am, okay, and I, I'm not going to say I was an angel, because I wasn't. Okay. You know, I slept around, too, before I met her. Okay. So, you know, it wasn't like I was a deadbeat, as they may want to presume that I was, but I was not a deadbeat. If they knew what? the whole picture well, instead of half the picture. Him, so when you were I believe I was talking to the judge. I believe I was talking to the judge. When you were in with their mother, you would have a child, but then you'd question whether or not that child was yours. Exactly. But then you'd end up back in the relationship. We, we seesaw back and forth together. Only to have another child. I don't even know if that child's my name. Then you question if exactly. it was yours. <laughs> right. After my first and child, like I said, when I met her, and, and she had three kids before I met her. That has nothing to do with what's going on now. I, you know, so why we was, why why we was having a relationship, I don't believe I was, I, I believe the judge was talking to me. Why man broke your promises up. then? Okay. Why sit right there and act like that, everything cool? That's, that's on me. That's on me. I told you. I said, let her explain this to Can I answer your question? 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 If you show up to my graduation. Let her answer Mr. Davis. What did you do? First of all, first of all, that is a lie. Mr. Davis, let her speak. Let her speak. I want to explain to you. I asked you, you, 2005, that's the last time I seen your face since 2013. I asked you, I say, all you got to do, I forgive you for everything you ever done wrong to me, if you doubted me, or whatever the case is. Show up to my graduation. You can say I'm lying or whatever. I can tell my brother you know, right here and vouch for it. You told me that. I told you myself and you told told you about me graduation, yes. too. I so said you can't two, lie about I that. I two tickets for you and Carlita. At the end of the day, when you called to confirm or when you walked that stage, he wasn't there. You mean when she alleged to call, she there. never called me. She never called me, period. And her, and the Lord is going to send you straight to hell well, with these lies. We won't be going, I won't I be going alone. I won't be going alone. I will not be going alone. I understand that you're saying this relationship was on and off. You were kind of out there. She was maybe cheating. But you're saying that this happened throughout the relationship. Why so much difference when it comes to Miss Rubin? Cheryl, why so much difference when it comes to her? As I explained to you before, Anna, I had my doubts because their mother slept around, not only on me, but, but before why me. Do you why do you act that doubt out? Why is I it that Jonathan your doubt is projected onto her singly? I treated her Jonathan singly? and Janita. I actually embraced them. Matter of fact, Janita was, I treated her like gold, just like my oldest child. If I'm your golden child, you would have been there for your golden child. Really? Okay. Even if you not giving up money, call, come see. Every time I talk to him, he ain't got no money you to do nothing. You never talk to me. You know, you's a lie. No, talk to the And as the that, court. I didn't have a man figure like in my life to tell me how, how to treat guys. I got to treat me so, you know, I look the guys like for love and everything. Like, uh, again, like them one minute and be gone next minute. I can have sex in a minute and be gone or whatever. It's just like he have not been there. So you were sleeping around. You just, you were promiscuous. You could not. Yeah, but don't fall too far from the you tree. You feel like you were looking for a father? Leave it alone and talk to me because he's showing who he is by his statements. Leave it alone. <laughs> Mr. Davis, all I'm suggesting to you is as you condemn their mother, keep in mind you've already admitted to the court that you were in an on and off relationship with her for many years. So you say the apple can't fall too far from they the tree criticizing her. What I'm saying to you is that you were with their exactly. mother, so why whether or not they're your children or not. Why you say you're throwing her in? Why you say you're throwing her in? You know, right. I, 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 never, I never said I was an angel. I never said I did anything that was halo. I, I want to hear from the plaintiff's witness. Sir, would you please state your name? My name is Jonathan Rubin. Hello, Mr. How Rubin. How you doing? Now, 
you contend that you are Mr. Davis's son, yes. am I correct? And you are Ms. and Ms. Rubin's brother. Yes. What do you have to say about this? Far as me hearing about this DNA test, it surprised me because if you ask for a DNA test and you claim you I'm yours, you know what I'm saying? And then I hear that it's about uh, disease in the family. Why would you wait after 27 years just to come to me with this? It's something you should have told me on the phone. Do something. Let me know Can what's happening. It's about child Can I address So now, Ronnie? disease in the family. Mr. Davis. Okay, here's what I mean by the disease in the family. I want my kids, if they are my kids, I want them to be protected. But yeah. I at least want them to know exactly what could be coming their way. Okay? I lost my father to prostate cancer. I lost my mother to septus. So there are various illnesses in your family, and you are concerned. I'm concerned for my kids because, like I said, my daddy died of prostate cancer. He's at, but he treated them okay. like I'm treating and them. To, he treated me the same way. And so, so I understand this where they're coming from. And so this is purely altruistic. I mean, this is out of the goodness of your heart that you really want to take this They DNA need to test. know as well as I need to know for our peace of mind, plus financially. It's been killing me. I'm not running around rolling in a Rolls Royce. I'm not walking around with no Rolex watch. Mr. Rubin, thank you so much for your testimony. You may have a seat. Uh, Mr. Davis, were you paying the child support? Yes, ma'am. How long have you paid it? I've been paying this child support since 1993. Right. So where's so I have I have proof we to show what I've been paying. It. I don't know where it's we going. Don't know where it's 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 I, I, I went to the, the I went to the Children and Family Services. Uh, yeah. Let's have some order, ladies. How far behind do you think he I think is? About seven thousand dollars. Never behind. started. Probably that too. Now, Mr. Davis, are you behind in child support yes, payments? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any idea how much? My rough guess, like I said, I have proof showing here from 2012. What proof is that you're saying? Okay, this proof shows the date, the last date, which is in pink, as mm -hmm. you can see here. Jerome, can you hand that to me, please? September of 2012. Mm -hmm. And it shows that marriage is right there, it says 48000 Once they update everything... 48000 that's what's saying there. But like I said, it's, it's probably, the last count I got was 60000 And I don't know where the it's money's going true, from because sure. they garnish every it's check I true. ever gotten. I don't quit my jobs because I'm paying child support and run no. off to another job. I don't do no, that. I stick up to my responsibility because that's the reason. I, I was there. Carlita's, no. Carlita's no. paying for me to survive. Carlita that's she's paying no. for me to survive. Car Mr. Mr. Davis, I will see this. I see... <laughs> Small you know, payments here throughout no, the years I have that you've been to do making with how the system payments. What I'm trying to understand is, is this whole issue with you and the DNA test and wanting to know whether or not you're really their father, is this really about the illnesses or is this about this huge it's both. child support it debt? Is both. Child support. It is both. It is both. Which Regardless one of what they want to say, and, ne and neither one outweighs the other. I would like to hear from I your go to wife. The doctor. Please step up to the podium, ma'am. State your name. My name is Carlita Davis. Hi, Miss Davis. How are you doing? So, please tell me this child support situation and th this huge debt that yes. he owes. Are you aware that he this, was making yes, these payments? The, the point of it is they take it. I've been married to Johnny 22 years. Never an uh, income tax check has came into our house. It goes to y'all. I uh, don't know where. I filed with my husband with my three children that I have. They took it. It took me three years to fight to get back $700 for of my three refund. children, of my money. Three this is what eight. I'm saying. But if, I don't if they know. are his children, if, true. in fact, they it's are his in, children, uh, yes. he should be paying and child I don't, support. And I so. don't knock yeah. them, him not paying it. But what but I'm saying to you is every, oh, they God, take it out the check. They take the income tax. I mean, you got... If I didn't work, he wouldn't have anywhere to stay. Thank you so much, Ms. Davis, for your testimony. Well, actually, you're supposed to ask the question to the court or talk to the court, not I'm to sorry. her. But well, what, what is it that you are curious about? <laughs> because I want to know, because she ain't never lied to me, none of, not, not one time in my life. So you like, have a good have, regard Are you here Davis? because it's child support? Be no, honest. No, no, darling. I'm not just here because of child support, no. And I, now, I got just love tell you, for you. And, you and I got me? love for you, too. Right, right, and right, I'm right, not going to lie. you, Carly, It's just giant. I know. It's not you. It's not you. Cheryl, I see when you... We're speaking to Ms. Davis, you were more emotional than when you were speaking to Mr. Davis. She treats me right. Okay. When he when he didn't when he treated me differently from both of them, she was the person right there. Don't do her like that. Show her love. Treat her the same way. She was always the mediator. <laughs> so of course I love her. I got a lot of love for her. You, this this has really hurt you. I can see that. It pisses me off. It does. There is no child.
that should have to go through what you went through. No, like no, I said, no. I don't care if you were his enemy's child. There should have been a toy there Not for you as well. True. Because you were a child. <laughs> I want you to tell Mr. Davis, why do you have those tears? What is that hurt specifically? Let him know what that is. That, how you gonna treat them two just so holy? And she didn't even care. She didn't even want to be around you. I'm the one chasing after your love. Then you get up here and you want to act like, oh, all this never happened. Come on, dude, miss me with all that. I know that's right. Come and on. As far as a relationship, any of that, all that's out the door. I don't want to talk to him. Lose my number. Don't try to contact me. None of that. I don't want none of it. Mr. Davis, those are really strong words to hear from two women that could potentially be your daughters. Yeah, that it hurts. It does. And I was wrong. And, I, and I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I was right. Nothing you I did to Cheryl was right. was right. I should not. You right, Yana. If I run the one toy, but I was not thinking like that. I was young. I was not thinking. I didn't use my head. I, yeah, I used that, but I didn't use the right head. I did not use the right head when I came to see her. But if they did not, there's nothing right. I can do. I did, I did make an I'd effort. like to have you step to the podium, please. And I think it's time for us to learn the results so that all of us can finally know whether or not you two are family. All of you are family, I should say. Jerome, do you have the first envelope? Yeah. So we've administered a test for each child because you said you have doubts about all three. Yes. And this first test relates to Jonathan Rubin. In the case of Jonathan Rubin, it has been determined by this court that Mr. Johnny Davis, you are his father. Yeah, I, thought, I never had no doubts in that one. Mr. Davis, you told me you had I the doubt on every child. child. I said I was having all of them tested me, because though. I had doubts in their mother. Okay. That's the reason why I said I was having them tested. But, so that means you had doubts about Jonathan. Yes, yes. that's what you said. I was you there. Jonathan was there. I had to have... I mean, it was all three of them, okay? The doubt has now been put to rest yes. for Jonathan. Moving on. As it relates to Miss Janita Rubin, it has been determined by this court that Mr. Davis, you are the father. So this can be a laughing matter maybe to you, but I am hoping that you can support your sister Cheryl. Yes. Because she's the one that always felt different. Because this is a big moment for her and you deserve to know. Jerome, please. In the case of Cheryl Rubin, this court has determined that you are tick, tick, her phone. father. You already knew that. Uh, uh, you uh, already knew that. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Child support. Here I come. I don't worry about it. Yeah. Come with it. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. It's just, it's, it's uh, continuing. It ain't stopped yet. Anywhere. So why should it stop you now? You're doing you this, and I want you to do wrong. this. Just know you losing. Good. Can I, can Good. I, can now I got something to show the judge. Now I got something to show the judge. So therefore, it's like you got a copy of that. I find it interesting that you're reducing this now to the child support. That now it's all about just pay the money and we don't have anything to do with you. But the emotions that I saw displayed earlier today, it didn't have anything to do with the child support. You all were talking about how he wasn't there. Yeah. What you came in here believing as truth is truth. Mr. Davis is your father, all three of you. One thing the court can't order is for you all to get along and act maturely and try to have a relationship. Exactly. But what I can encourage you to do is to make apologies for the things you know you did wrong by these children, because at the end of the day, they are only here because you made them. Exactly. And all they wanted from you was love and attention, what every child wants. There's so much going on here, and only you can start making amends for this and start changing it. Ms. Tisby, you were in love with the defendant and claim he has been ducking your request for a DNA test for your daughter, Jordan. You and your mother say he better step up and be a daddy when today's results prove what you've always known.
that he is Jordan's father. Is that correct? Yes. Mr. Cordman, you say the plaintiff is delusional and is only trying to use you for money, and when the results reveal you are not her child's biological father, you want her out of your life for good. Correct. Oh, Mr. Quarterman, you say she's using you for your money? Anytime they come around, it's about money. Yes, ma'am. Explain. Uh, they come around and they, they, they just simply ask for, like, uh, different items or, or something like that. And from day one, I've been asking for a blood test. And that was from day one. Do you always <laughs> ask them for money, Miss Tisby? No. You don't? I don't need no money from them. I got... I take care of my own child. And you've done nothing for the child, Mr. Quarterman? No, ma'am, I have not. From the beginning, from the very beginning, I've been asking for a blood oh, test. She, uh, she came forth to me and told me about it after we had stopped communicating for a couple of months. Well, maybe about three or four months. But after that, uh, she contacted me and told me that she was pregnant and that it was a possibility that I was another guy. So, however, you know, in between time and the meantime, it's continued, you know, on and on. Here, here or there, they'll pop up. Oh, you gonna do something for her? A call, uh, you know, come around my family house, stuff like that. Did you tell him there was a possibility it could be another guy, Miss Tisby? Yes. You did? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, admittedly? Not... Yes. All right. Take me back. I want to understand the nature of this relationship. I don't know how the other party may have felt, but it was just simply kicking it with me. Yes, ma'am. So, it was just a casual relationship? Yes, ma'am. Casual yes, relationship. Chunky. I felt like we was in a relationship. What gave you the indication that you thought you were in a relationship? Because basically, you were coming around the whole time. He even told me he loved me, so... That sounds like a relationship. I mean, I, you honestly, love her. You no, I mean, come I around all her. the time. I have love for her, but not in love with her. <laughs> and, uh, not at all. She came about in a time in my life where, uh, you know what I'm saying, I was kind of down and out. Jump. And me and her both was helping each other. You see what I'm saying? So now all of a sudden, you know, the baby situation came about, you know, and I told her from the beginning, since it was another guy, I want a blood test. And that's why I'm, I'm here to see you today. You. How long were you all seeing each other casual? She said... A year, this, almost a year. Almost a year. I thought we was in a relationship. And he loved He, I used to go get him to bring him to her. Yana, that's a, uh, that's a, a definite feel. I got three cars, so who would come pick me up? Come on. I never I came and picked you up. You never picked me up. I never come you and never pick you up. You never picked me up. Me and my no, husband. Ever. You ain't never come pick me up. We never came and pick you up and no, brought ma'am. you to that house. No, ma'am. Never. 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 So, wait a minute. You pick him up and bring him <laughs> over to your house? I bring it to him. We stayed <laughs> next door to each other. We had a two-story house. She stayed on one side of the house, and I had my own house. So, wait a minute. Miss Tisby, what you're saying is, is you, you saw firsthand that you believe your daughter and, and Mr. Quarterman were in it a relationship. Basically, basically, at night, he creeps at night. And sometimes I see him sometimes on uh, I me mean, uh, in the daytime, but he basically he was staying there at night. They were together. They used to be together. Just at night? Not just at night. In daytime, sometimes he'll be there in the daytime. But she was just messing with him only. I know for a fact. So that's what you're saying. Your testimony is that you know your daughter wasn't seeing anyone nobody else, else during the time she was nobody with Mr. Else. Quarterman. No, nobody but him. Miss Tisby, you told him. <laughs> you you admitted you there was another guy. You but told it him wasn't. that. Did it you? Wasn't. So was there another guy? No. Mm-mm. I just said it because he heard me. He cheated on me. Oh, you just said that. Mm-hmm. But I'm in the room. I guess I made it. Okay, so you're saying there wasn't another guy. You said that because he had hurt you. Mm-hmm. So I was that... in love with him, though. Young, she uh, has a medical condition. She was in the hospital during the time or whatever the case was. After she told me about the pregnancy, the guy supposedly uh, jumped on her in the hospital or whatever. And then from that point, that's when she came after me. Like, it's supposed to be him or her the whole yeah, time. Talk. Yeah, I was with him. I, yeah, I was with the man. But, but you just told her that you were After we broke up. We broke up and I but you got told with somebody. That That's how when I found was, out I was It wasn't pregnant. another guy, right? It wasn't. We I want to understand. Miss wait, I need to understand. Which one is it, y'all? Wait, I need to understand this. You were with another guy or you were not? I was not when we was together. So when you were broke with Mr. We Quarterman, up. you were not sleeping with anyone else? Nope. Only after you got pregnant? After I got pregnant, that's when I met the boy. The other person? hmm She paid me. Both of she moved, she paid me to watch her son. I know for a fight. She didn't know that guy at the time. At all. I know she didn't know because she just was messing with him because <laughs> I used to pick him up 
and bring him to her house. Or stop saying you sometimes me up. I never pick you up. You never I never, me, me up. and my husband never came and keep got a, you. I keep a car. You keep a car, but I got three cars at it, the moment. How I know where you stayed at? How I used to drop you off at the <coughs> corner of your house? You never drop my I never home. did. No. I'm not gonna push you up under the bus, cause you is a nice person. But when it came down to that grandbaby there, that's what <coughs> I'm here for. And that's what I'm here for, cause from day one, like I said, I've been the in day one. Blood yeah, test. I was in the wrong place. Where's the other guy? The baby, Where's though? the other guy at though? I want to hear about the birth. When Jordan was born, Mr. Quarterman was there or not there? No, he wasn't. When I was pregnant, I told him everything. He came when I was pregnant, holding my stomach and everything, doing all that. But now she's not yours. Tell me about the birth. On the 16th of April, I had her. And on the 17th, they told me to come in the hospital because my little girl passed away, about to pass away. So what you're saying is Jordan really was a twin. Yeah, she a twin. And there was another baby. Mm -hmm. Yes. She was seven days old. I had her and she passed away seven days after I had her. And she passed away. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Did you inform Mr. Quarterman mm -hmm. that this had happened? My mom called him because I... My mom and my cousin called him because I wasn't paying attention to nobody but my baby. Yes. I ain't have time for nobody but her. And I can't sleep at night because of my baby. Two years, I haven't been asleep because I think about my little girl. Yes. And I came and told him. Me and my, fr me and my um, friend went around there and told him his, his baby finna pass. He told me to get away from his house. Why the heck I came around there? Told me to get away from his house. I said, your baby finna to pass her last breath. Her last breath. Ma'am. Yes, Mr. Corden. You're not here from these people. Uh, you know, I'm just being totally honest. She crept up with the, uh, the I guess, the, the preacher, or uh, whoever that was, uh, you know, doing the funeral. And she came and asked for it wasn't no money. funeral. You see what I'm saying? Uh, whatever it was. It wasn't no money. Uh, a, a, a procession or whatever. Nothing. She came and asked for money. No, I never told you nothing to about no money. To help bury this child. Never. I didn't need no was, money. But that was I the whole point. I never said nothing about no money. Okay. I buried my child myself. Hold, I don't right. give us a money. chance. Okay, oh. hold on. Let me understand this story. Go ahead, Mr. Quarterman. However, her and the pastor were sitting there, and they were oh, saying Jesus. that it was my child. I oh, explained Jesus. to her that it was supposed that to be down. a possibility that it was another guy, whatever. I want a blood test, all this and that. Honestly, I'm not a bad person. You no, see what I'm saying? But I'm not going to pay or put up any type of money for a child that I don't know about, because I have six I other kids. Said but you make twins, you know though, telling me you got twins, too. Six However, other kids? Yes, ma'am, I have six kids. And you got twins, sets of my, twins. My first, my first set of kids are twins, yes, ma'am. But, I mean, that it just happened. So, Ms. Tisby, you believe, since Mr. Quarterman <clears throat> has a set of twins, that that even further confirms that he is Jordan's biological father? Yes, ma'am. And does that... Do anything for your belief, Mr. Quarterman? I'm not being ignorant about the situation, but I don't see that, you know, I don't see that having anything to do with it. Because, I mean, that could come from her family, too. That's uh, genetics, you know? Do you have any other twins in your family? I got twin brothers. So you felt like when they were having the funeral for the baby... I never... ...that they were just coming up to you asking you for money? Never. I never yes, no. Never yeah. asked you for no money. Even, I, even never. Now, throughout the whole time, though, you know what I'm saying? I'm, never. I'm not a social media guy. I'm not a... a, a a big fan of, the, you know, the Instagram and all of those stuff like that. But uh, she had posted some things on, online asking, you know, I guess Facebook about am I the father or not. Would you like to see? Yes, I'd like to yes, see that evidence. Thank you. I, I guess. Okay. I guess. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. This is what? What are you submitting to the court, sir? Uh, this is just, you know, from, uh, I guess, a Facebook post that she had and she was uh, asking Facebook do I look like the child or, you know, whatever the Oh, case it's was. a split screen of baby Jordan Yes, ma'am. and you. And That's she writes, oh. do, do she look like him, yeah or nah? For us, to be, for us to be in a relationship and everything like that, that is a booking photo for when I got arrested. So, however, you know what I'm saying, for me to be in a relationship with her, we ought to have pictures or, you know, some kind of stuff like that. Yeah, I never... She got my booking photo off of Facebook. Now, that's like, a shame. got my address off Don't of Google. You know. So, Ms. Tisby, listen, the question seems to indicate you're looking for... to take a poll as to whether people believe Jordan looks like Mr. Quarterman. Does she look she like him, yeah like or not? Him, 
But you say, yeah, no. Nah. Are you worried? Are you... No, I said it because he denied her. And he was like, he, she looked like the other boy. But like I said, from the very beginning... And I got pictures right here that... another guy. Baby so, pictures. What evidence did you bring, ma'am? Let me Two see. Two baby pictures of him. And one thing about it, Your Honor, just let me speak. <laughs> I understand what he trying to say. But if you lay with somebody... You got to pay the cost. Y'all laid together. Y'all stayed together. Y'all been together. You could deny what you want to deny. <clears throat> but like I said, now, when this baby come out to be yours, you gonna have to not never sleep had, at night. I never you had a problem with it at the front of I'm sleep good. We asked sleep good you, everywhere. I personally asked you, we will pay for blood testing for you. You said, nah, but it took two it. years to call this young lady for you to get uh, 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 was we could have uh, uh, did this home. We could have did it at home. But I guess made... what? At the end of the day, you told me you don't want to take care of no more children because you don't want child support. You didn't tell me that. You don't want to pay no child support. But well, I, I asked you for some gas. Hold on. I asked you for some gas medicine when you told me, came in my household, like he said, sat in my house and told me, Jordan looked like one of my kids. I said, Never. oh. Yes, you did. You no. said anything Jordan need, no. call you. Your family oh member even said she looked like you. Yeah. You really? told me. Your call family you member even said one. she looked like you. Her. All right, let's get right. some order because I want to understand where we're going here. You only got so what out. you're saying is you even had a conversation with I, him where he seemed to be accepting of Jordan. Yes. And I was there, so... But you were there, Mom. I was there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he asked if she needed anything Man, and even indicated him. that she looked like... like one of his, his, his son. His other son. Yes. All right. And, I and that's why your people. daughter just handed up this particular evidence. The first picture is a picture of Mr. Quarterman as a baby. And then the next picture is a picture of Jordan. You feel like they look exactly alike. Yes, ma'am. And you say even his family members say. Yes, Both his mother. Yep. His mother yep. said it. Mom. You see that little girl there? That's a princess. Yes, ma'am. She everything to me. Yes, ma'am. Hey, you gonna step up. We don't, you ain't gotta bring a dog. A child don't know about money. Ma'am. They don't care about it. money. So, Miss Tisby, never... listen, I can see the, the passion in your eyes and as you speak about this beautiful baby. Jordan. That's my baby. I'm her mama and father. I'm her everything. When she gets sick, she got a grandma. I'm, she don't need... You don't, don't need nothing. She don't need... Baby good. When a little girl need to know <clears throat> her daddy. Her daddy. She don't need no money. You're right about that. Every little girl needs their father. Yeah. I think the reason why we're here <clears throat> is because, yes, we I'm want Papa. Jordan to know the truth. I'm gonna continue to say I never tried to run from my responsibilities. And that's what I did. All I wanted was a blood test from the beginning. From the beginning. I made two attempts. I made two attempts. Okay, hold on. If you want a blood test, it's so easy to get. So many times. I ain't gonna have to go to Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. On Atlanta Boulevard, $198, you could have got a blood test. Listen, I have heard enough testimony. I understand how we arrived in this courtroom today now. I do. And I have the results for you. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. Ron, the envelope, please. Yes, ma'am. In the case of Tisby versus Quarterman, when it comes to two-year-old Jordan Tisby, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Quarterman, you are not the father. What? Hmm. Huh? Shantina. Mm. Who is the father? Don't Who start is dancing. The father? Don't start clowning in yes, here. No, I ain't. I asked you at least three times. Was there anyone else? I hope it ain't that who I think. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help me. Oh, Lord, help me. Do you know who Jordan's father is, Miss Tisby? Gotta be that boy. Take the wheel, Jesus. <laughs> Miss oh, Tisby, Lord, I can see I this think, is making you is very that emotional. Boy that, oh, Do you God. know where this man is that she's no, talking yeah. about? I knew. Does he have an interest in being in her life? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we tried to. I, I, I think I put the police on him. We said, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I will apologize, and yes, I still ma'am. love you. Yes, ma'am. You is a good person. Yes, ma'am. I want to be happy because you know who her father is, but the way mom is acting over there, I'm, I'm not so sure I'm that happy. <laughs> Mr. Jones, you and your mother are co-plaintiffs who have brought the defendant, Ms. Milan, to court to prove her three-month-old son, Quinnell Jr., is not your biological child. Yes, Your Honor. You claim you took Ms. Milan and her other six kids into your home, and now she's trying to take you for a ride by claiming... This baby is yours. Yes, Your Honor. Additionally, you say when today's DNA results prove you are not the father, you are seeking $1,500 for housing and child care expenses. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Milan, though you do admit to cheating on Mr. Jones with another man, you say you're unsure if you were already pregnant when you cheated. Yes, Your Honor. You say you're here today to prove to Mr. Jones and his meddling mother once and for all that Mr. Jones is without a doubt the biological father of baby Quinnell Jr. Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Jones, why do you feel Quinnell Jr. is not your son's child? Well, Your Honor, I contacted the court three days after the baby was born because I watched my son break down at the hospital. You know, he was going to be devastated if this child wasn't his. It doesn't make sense to not know. And so, how did you two meet? Her mother and my mother was neighbors. When she moved back home with her mom, uh, her mom used to talk to her about me or whatever like that. And then how'd this relationship begin? When I first, you know, moved home with my mom, I noticed him. She was like, you know, this Mr. Jones, he lived next door. We started, you know, just on a friendly note, you know, hey, how you doing? We'll sit out, we'll talk, laugh, joke. I'll go back in, tend to my kids. Um, eventually, he started, like, I could tell it was a little more flirting going on. Like, he'd be like, um, why don't you come watch a movie sometime? Or, you know, I wasn't taking him very seriously because it, it is an age difference in, between me and Mr. Jones. So, why but, were you entertaining this? We started off, uh, we, we were just friends. I'd go outside, smoke, he'd play with the boys, you know, my six other boys. Um, eventually, they got the mom. So, he and... became close with the kids? He would play with the kids? Yeah, he became real close. With and them. did you enjoy that interaction, having yes, someone did. there, I a did. father figure for your children? Yeah, I did. Did you all talk about having a baby? Was this a committed relationship? Was this just um, dating? In, in the beginning, we were friends, like I said, and then we just eventually did have sexual relations. I didn't take it, you know, serious at the time I was with my ex at the time, so... Oh, you were? You yeah, were still so, with your ex? Yeah, that's so that's when I kind of, you know, leaned back off of Mr. Jones. But eventually, I seen how I was feeling about Mr. Jones. Even after we had sex or whatever, he was like... He was looking at it as a friendship. But my thing was, I don't have sex with my friends. I thought it was more once I did cut my ex off, so... So, Mr. Jones, you thought this was just, uh... What? I feel like once I pr- approached her, you know what I'm saying, I tried to make her my lady, she chose her ex over me. You felt like you were, um, runner-up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because I came to her and I came to her like a man. I was like, I like you and I'm feeling you or whatever like this, so we can make something happen. Once I started sleeping with Mr. Jones, I was no longer sleeping with my ex. You knew that a likely consequence of having unprotected sex would be that you would become pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. Did you discuss that with Mr. Jones? He always said he couldn't have children. Said the doctor told him. Why'd you say you couldn't have children, Mr. Jones? Because I used to play sports in school or whatever, so I had to, you know, have a full body physical. And they told me that I wasn't able to have kids. So So during a physical, they told you you would be unable to have children? Yes, ma'am. Judge, it was at a point where uh, they had got to the point where they were serious to the point enough for her and her kids didn't have anywhere to go. So I offered for her and her kids to come to my house. That's how I thought that they were in a relationship with So you me. thought they were in a relationship? Yes, yeah, Because it, it, when it, her... It time she and her children didn't have anywhere to go, uh-huh. you said they could come and stay with you? Yes, ma'am. Yep. And they did? Yes. Yeah. When they, came, when they came and stayed with me and my mom, me and my mom, we was then in a, in a, a relationship. relationship. Yeah. When they came and stayed... Ms. Jones, in your suit, the suit uh-huh. you've brought today, you're suing for $1,500. Yes, ma'am. 
because you say she owes you some rent money because she was staying at your house. Yes, ma'am. But in your testimony, you just stated that you invited her to come stay with you. She had nowhere she to had go. Because she had nowhere to go. She had nowhere to go, the bottom line. And I wasn't going to leave her out there whether she had money or not, but eventually you're going to get some, okay? I'm going to look for you to reimburse me for what, I've, what I'm doing for you. Right. And your son was living there with Ms. Mylan and the children yes. at first? Yes. He when, left. When I left, I didn't, I didn't come back home from the bar. You know what I'm saying? Wait a minute. What happened so was now... she ended up going through my phone or whatever like that, and she got... And she seen that I, I ended up conversating with my ex, so we, they started an argument. So I left that day. And when I left, I went to a bar with my friends or whatever like that, my ex so happened to uh, appear there. He didn't okay. leave appear. that day. <laughs> he left the prior... He left the day Those after. Those exes always appear. Yeah, she, this was an ex They never that always disappear. <laughs> they only appear. She had the ex all the time. She knew about that. They were... No, it was, he it didn't was have the much... ex all the... When we were together, it was so yeah. much going on at the time. This when I got so upset when I seen the text. I hadn't even been thinking about the ex. She had been out the picture this time for a sec. The ex always appeared. So now, place. when you're living with Miss Jones, the baby's born or you're pregnant? No, this no, is before the baby's this even conceived. Yeah. Even before I mean, conception. or maybe uh -huh. why. It, it, conception could have happened then. That's Mr. What... Jones, you took your one girlfriend and her kids, moved them into your mother's house, and then went with your ex. Yes, pretty much. That's what Yes, Your Honor. Like you said, I'm young. It's a big age difference. I started getting a little... I, get, I got a little, you no know, stressed out. You know what I'm saying? It's six kids, all boys, plus plus my mom, my two my stu, uh, my two little sisters. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, the house is packed. It was crowded. I got frustrated. I ain't gonna lie. It started to get to me. Come, come morning, I have to go to work. So I'm calling him, I'm calling him, I'm, calling him. I'm like, where are you, where are you? You know I have to go to work. And he was like, he wasn't answering at first and I was like getting mad. So I'm like, okay, I need you to be here because I wasn't comfortable with leaving her and all of her kids at my home unattended because she had so many. And by him leaving, I was like, okay, why am I doing this and you're not even here? And my reason for doing it yeah. was for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so you say she's trying to trap your son. I felt like she was trying to trap my son because she stopped taking her birth control. She said it was making her sick, and, but she should have started a, another birth control instead of stopping it all together. What would be her motive to trap your son? She want to be with him. She wants to have him in her life. Is that true, Ms. Mylan? No, Why'd you I stop taking I birth stopped. control? I was sick. It, it was just making me sick. And so how did you find out she was pregnant? She called, she called and told me. I was with my ex. She called and Is told me. Is it still me. your ex when you back, back up, with her? I I'm gonna tell you. No, she's still Yo. my ex. We wasn't together. When, when, I, when I was with my ex, she, we wasn't together. It just, we had, we we had a, a well, long we separated. I lived. relationship. I didn't All run right. back. So get to the pregnancy part. <laughs> okay. okay. She was, she called, she said she was three and a half weeks pregnant. I was like, by who? You know what I'm saying? She, she said, it's a possibility, it's your... I know that, you know what I'm saying? Then she was like, I had sex with my ex or whatever like that, so she was like, it's a possibility it could have been him too. So she tells you. She tells right you, off the bat. Honest, right off it the bat. It could be she yours. Straight forward. It could be his. Mm -hmm. When I found out she stopped taking the birth control, the first thing I done was I gave my son some condoms because she has six kids already and I know she's fertile. Use them. Did you use them, Mr. Jones? No. No. See, you should. Sometimes. When you found out she was pregnant, even though she said it could be yours or it could be my ex's, did you step up? Yes, yes ma'am. You did. did. Yes, ma'am. I, I wanted you to knew... make sure. I wanted yes. to make sure. If, if it's a possibility of being my child, I want to be there. I don't want to miss nothing. I want to be able to go back That's and right. tell, tell these stories and say I was there doing this, doing that. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. right. when, he was, when he was being born, I'm right there holding her hand, watching everything. Yeah. That's right. And That's... you were there as well, Ms. Jones? I was at the hospital, you know, like I told my son, I... Just be there until we find out otherwise because he, I raised him without a father. And every child needs their parents. And I don't want him to be the, like the man that... his father. I want him to be a better man. So... I understand. When she was pregnant, yeah, she didn't have true. to lift a finger. Your Honor, she didn't have to lift a finger for nothing. You know what I'm saying? I did everything. You no. Know, to take care of the boys, make sure they going to school. He I was, you no know, feeding her, doing the cleaning. Yeah. So did you ever tell the ex that he potentially could be the father too? I told him first. You know, he was, I was around him at the time. I was feeling sick and I was like, 
you know, I knew I hadn't been out there that long also. But I did go to the store and get a pregnancy test and it came out positive. I ended up telling Mr. Jones also. And you know, he did his talking or whatever, but he ended up texting and was like, okay, regardless of what, you know, if this my child, I do want to be around. Let me know when you go to the doctor. So because... you were there participating like the father. Did you sign the birth certificate? No, I told no, no, I, I didn't he sign went... anything because I wanted the DNA test first. Well, that was smart. Yeah, my son cried, Judge. When I say he, he cried, he literally broke down at this hospital. He literally cried and broke down because he was gonna be devastated. And I felt his pain. I mean, I could literally feel his pain. That's why I contacted the court to help us because I wanted him to be sure. But and it... when you say he isn't sure, can you explain to me what the doubt is exactly? My brother passed in uh, July the 16th of last year. And during that time, is around the time that she got pregnant. And she came to give her condolences and everything, but she came with another man. I drove. And on another occasion, I was she, her, I, uh, I met a friend's oh. house playing dominoes. It's a guy come, come, come to that house. We, it's like a different street. This guy come knocking on the door looking for her. And I'm like, okay, you on the wrong side. See, I had my doubts because, you no, know, the doctor told me I wouldn't be able to have kids. You know and so between you seeing her with other men, her admitting that she also slept with her ex, and then you being told, Mr. Jones, that you were sterile and wouldn't be able to have children, that's a lot of doubt for you. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Mylan, you submitted a calendar to the court. Yes, Your Honor. This calendar outlines, in red, the date you were intimate with Mr. Jones. So that was June 28th. Yeah, that's a... And then next it shows, in yellow, where you went for your ultrasound on August the 8th. Mm -hmm. They told you you I were... Was five weeks and four days. You were five weeks and four mm -hmm. days. So if you count back five weeks and four days, all right, I see you've had sex with Mr. Jones. Now, your ex, did you have sex with him sometime during that window? I want to say maybe two or three to three days after the 4th of July. So, if it was two days after the 7th, this is when you had sex with <laughs> X. That's still a very close window. Your Honor, I ain't never been through this situation, and I do have seven boys and all now. I always knew who my kid's father was. You did sleep with both men during the window of concept. Yes, I did. And so, Ms. Mylan, what are your hopes for today? I'm praying, like, when I first found out, and I was like, God, please don't let this be, you know, my ex-child, even to the point where I was like, I'm gonna give it up for adoption if I could just know off the muscle that it was his, you know? But I put it in God's hands, and I was like, I don't feel... I told Mr. Jones, and he stepped up immediately, like, he was there the whole time, two months on up until now. He's been there, he's all... And you named the baby know. Quinnell. Yes, I did. But I always, I, your I always... last name because he didn't sign the birth certificate. Yeah. So, what are your hopes, Mr. Jones and Miss Jones? Do you hope the child is yours? Yes. I pray. We, we've mine. been taking care him. of this child since the day he came out, Jones. I love him. And we're, yeah. we're gonna, we, I, I will continue to do that. I just want my son to be sure that this is his child. If he's there and he's saying, Mama, this is my baby, and I, that means me as a grandmother, I'm supposed to step up and take up where he's, where he's fall short. I feel like me and her kids had a relationship before I even met her. Actually. Okay. So they used to watch me play ball. You no, know, I used to teach them how to play ball and stuff like this. So I feel he like was, they was there before her. He was a her. good male role model the whole time. Like, you know, as far as them being around the male and him being young, like, I couldn't believe the attachment myself. Like, they are ex mom. Can we go out and get Mr. Jones, see if you want to play football or basketball, even to when they was, you know, having trouble in school, you know, mom. And so he was always there for them? He was always there for them, even when we were just friends. So, in addition to the $1,500 you're suing for, you also have spent money on diapers, wipes, formula, Clothes. onesies. Anything I thought Infant he would care need that items, he didn't have. And you've provided the court with these receipts today. Yes, ma'am. Those are just a few. I will deal with your suit after I get done with the results. First, I'm going to go to the results. Are we ready? Yes. yes. <laughs> these results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Jones versus Mylan, when it comes to three-month-old, Quinnell Milan, 
It has been determined by this court. Mr. Jones, you are not the father. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, what? You okay, Mr. Jones? I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope you will find comfort in knowing that you did the right thing. <laughs> no matter what you may have gotten wrong or right in the relationship with Miss Mylan, you did right by this beautiful baby. As for your suit, Miss Jones, for $1,500 for the room and board, and for all of the expenses related to the child. You know something, Judge? I don't need any money. She's gonna need everything that she has to take care of those kids. This is why it's an honor for me to sit here. Because I get to witness the power of forgiveness, humanity, compassion on a daily basis. Mr. Johnson, you are here with your wife, but you are positive her newborn daughter, Diari, is not your biological child. You have petitioned this court to grant you a paternity test so you can get your name removed from the birth certificate. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Johnson, you say that despite your husband's fears, you are confident he fathered your daughter and you intend to prove paternity today. Is this correct? Yes, Your Honor. This court must decide if there is sufficient evidence to grant a test. I want to start with you, Mr. Johnson. Why do you need the test so badly? Because, I mean, I want to I wanna be for sure. I take care of all my kids. I, 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 my name is on the birth certificate. I don't want to... I don't want a child to have my last name if it's really not mine. And because you're married, you're on the birth certificate because the child was born within the marriage. Of course. Um, half of the time, I don't want to be there. I don't want to assist with the child. I don't want to do too much as far as uh, fathering goes because, I mean, I'm really not sure, you know? I'm, I'm kind of uncomfortable, so... Majority of the time, I'm just, like, piling myself up with work, staying gone, you know? So you're admittedly detaching yourself from the home and the family. Yeah, because I don't want to get hurt. You're so afraid that the child is not yours. <clears throat> of course. So, Ms. Johnson, how is this affecting you? How is this affecting the home? My family's on the line. Um... I'm sorry, it's emotional. You don't have to be sorry. Family and children are the most important things to us. Take a breath and go ahead. <sighs> I feel like my kids don't deserve this. My daughter don't. She's only 10 days old. Like, she shouldn't have to be the black sheep of the family. I'm just trying to protect myself. Right. You know? And I'm not trying to hurt that... anyone, but I'm just trying to protect myself. Right. And in doing that, she feels you separating from the family. So we know that there is a lot on the line here. Am I correct? Correct. So what happened? How do we get here? How does a married couple end up here before me in paternity court? Honestly, we, um, we always had a rocky relationship. Uh, ten years, separated numerous times, mostly because of me. Um, I was always in the streets. This was like a normal thing for me, being in the streets, being gone, you know, dealing with other women. It was, it was always... I never really cared the way I should, you know. After we lost our child, I just didn't, like, take heed to it. I just kept drilling and kept drilling and just doing what I wanted to do. I just, I just never took her feelings into consideration. So, I mean, honestly, I can say that I played a big part in us being here today. Okay. But... I'll, mostly I'll live it because of him. So I appreciate the honesty. I'm going to say that first off. I may not appreciate the behavior, but I appreciate the honesty. Mm -hmm. When you mess everything up, you got to be man enough to say, you know what? A lot of the reason why we're here is because of me. We may have to examine what Ms. Johnson did because, uh, unfortunately, we're in paternity court, so that's what we're going to have to do. But I like the fact that, as a man, you stood here and said... Thank you. I helped make this mess. Thank you. 
So, Ms. Johnson, your husband's testified that a lot of the reason why you got to this point is because of him. What happened? When we first separated, it was just because of infidelity, finding numbers in his phone, finding pictures, like, all types of stuff just was happening. It felt like he didn't care. Like, I find it for that moment, he'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, but then he'd go back right back to doing it. So, I mean, I... I left. A lot of it was, like, business. Like, she was... That's what like, he Like, I'm an artist, so I do a lot... I deal with a lot of women. But it don't have to be, oh, you're beautiful, what, uh, what you doing, meet me upstairs, you know, stuff like that. That's not... That's not... At that moment, at that moment, I, I felt that's what was needed. I feel know? like it don't take all it. It don't take all it. Well, this is actually a really good moment and a relationship lesson that many have had to learn. Because a lot of people work in businesses where they work predominantly with the opposite sex. Right. And it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Because what you tend to do is cross that line because it's very easy for that initial flirtation to turn into a lot more and destroy your family and your home, which is what it's doing. I mean, it actually, sometimes it did turn into much more. Sometimes it did. Yep. Uh, oh, I, I mean, know it did. That's why we... That's why we, we... We feud a lot. That's why we always break up. So how long did the separation last? A About year. a year. A year. Yes. All right, what happened? Me losing my child, you know, having a miscarriage, um, I feel like I did it by myself. Like, I went through the pain, the crying, everything by myself. Like, he wasn't there. So I feel like... Ain't no sense of me being in the house. It was just... It was just, like, for me... It was more or less, I didn't feel like a man when I was around her. She did. She she never addressed me enough to make me feel like a man. I, I feel he was like I was addressing too many other women. So I why feel should like I support? Why should I be there? Don't say you didn't feel like a man, because I always say, if you a man, you feel like a man. A woman can't make you feel or not make you feel like a man. A man is a man. <laughs> Now, I will say this. If you felt like you were giving and giving and you weren't getting reciprocity and that pulled you out of the house, that happens in relationships all the time. I get that. So you separated for a whole year. What happens during the separation? Well, during the separation, I just was... Just doing her and I was doing me. And, and we weren't planning on getting back together. And so you were out dating... Dating, yeah. And having sex. Yes. And you were with... Multiple people, one Just person... Just one person. With one person. Yes. And so, Mr. Johnson... Yes. After a year apart, how do you get back together? I don't know what type of change of heart she had. She just wanted to come over. We cook, we have family dinner, family movie night, and one thing led to the next. I just saw how my kids reacted to it, so... That's what made me want to go back. Because I was... You saw like, how happy your children while. were yes. to be with their dad and with you mm -hmm. and this. Yes, Aww. I understand that. And so how soon after you reconnected did you find out she was pregnant? Uh, maybe about two weeks or something like that. After, after the reconciliation. Back, yeah. And I was excited. I was scared. Because you know, I, I know I had it. sex with somebody else. So he was excited and you were scared. Yes. Because you did have sex with someone else during the time you were broken up we were and thought you were never getting back together again. Right. So, Mr. Johnson, you said you were excited. How do you go from excitement to doubt? Um, after the excitement, uh, we celebrated. We talked about it. You know, I mean, that was, like, the best time for me at that moment. Like, but... Here comes a week or so later. And she's like, um, I got something to tell you. And what did she say? She said, it's a possible... I said, I said, just be honest. Is it possible? She was like, yeah, it is possible that someone else may father. I just kind of, like, lost all everything. Because all I asked was a simple question, and I just didn't get that answer. So it's kind of hard for me. So you do admit, Ms. Johnson, that you had unprotected sex with this other man? Yes, Your Honor. And then when you reconciled with your husband, you had unprotected sex with him. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I didn't know who my baby's father was because I didn't know when I got pregnant, like what day I got pregnant. And by me going back to him so fast after being with somebody else, it was... it was scary. Did you ever tell the other man that he potentially could be the father? Yes, Your Honor. What was his response? He just said, well, in the beginning, it was like, I'll be there, but, like, if she's mine, I'll be there. But then, 
after she was born, I asked him to come to paternity court. He said, um, I must have doubt or I must feel like it's his and I was doing like it was ridiculous for him to come. So let me ask you something. When did you two reconnect? Can you tell me specifically when that was? On uh, June 20th. All right. I just want to do a little calculating myself. I have a conception calculator here. When was Diari born? She was born on uh, the 10th of this month. All right, March 10th. So if we put the birth date of March 10th, 2019 and hit calculate, it says the window of conception would be June 15th through June 19th. <clears throat> now let me go to the next page. So that would put the date of intercourse between June 12th and June 18th. Were you all back together then? That's why I feel the way I feel. Like, no matter how you and dress it up. And that's why you are asking this court to grant this test. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Well, after hearing the testimony presented before me today, this court has determined that there is sufficient evidence to order paternity testing in this case. We will reconvene after both of you submit to DNA testing done by our laboratory, and I will have the results for you then. In addition to that, because you all are married and you have a family with other children, I'm gonna send you off to the laboratory, but first I'm gonna send you to talk to Dr. Jeff, because I believe it is important that you all begin to do the work you still marry. I don't want to see this family destroyed. And I want you to be prepared. <laughs> Court is adjourned. And do you think you can accept the fact that your wife was with someone else? Well, I've kind of accepted it, but it's still uncomfortable. One thing I would say to the two of you, get yourselves ready for this result. Court is back in session in the case of Johnson versus Johnson. In our earlier hearing, uh, I found that there was sufficient evidence to order both of you to submit to DNA testing at our laboratory. Since our last hearing, what has gone through your mind? No matter what the outcome is, I just kind of, I just want to be able to deal with it. That's all. How about you, Ms. Johnson? Well, I've been nervous, kind of scared. Um, I just don't know what to feel right, to be honest. So if your husband is not Diari's biological father, do you know where the other father is? Yes, Your Honor. Has he expressed at all his willingness to be a part of Diari's life? Just in the beginning. I haven't really spoke to him, like, throughout my pregnancy or after, really. Okay. Dr. Jeff, I'd like to ask you, because this is a very difficult situation, and we have a family here. How do people prepare themselves for news that could devastate the fabric of their family. Well, I, I think it's important for them, and we had spoken about this, to look at some of the other challenges that they have not dealt with. You talked with them a few days ago about the death of their child. She had a miscarriage, Mrs. Johnson had a miscarriage. And so I followed up on that cue and found out that Mr. Johnson had not dealt with that miscarriage. Instead, it almost propelled him, if you will, into that separation and acting out sexually. He cried. Yes. And he started working through it. And I think it will deliver them in a place just for you, Judge, where whatever this result is, I think, I hope, they'll be able to handle it. Well, I am here and I have the results for you. But as you do with every family that walks out of this courtroom with good or bad results, however they perceive it, you're there for them, and you're going to be there for the Johnsons as well. You are Absolutely. going to meet with them again, no matter what the results are. He's going to work with you, and he's going to help give you the tools and help you identify the steps you need to take to keep your family together, all right? 
Are you ready for the results? Yes. Yes, Shauna. Jerome, may I have the envelope, please? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Johnson versus Johnson, when it comes to 12-day-old Diari Johnson, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. That's great so news. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Wow. My nerves were shot, honey. Yeah. I was like, woo! I'm so happy for you all. Woo! Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, you have one beautiful smile. I hadn't seen it all. <laughs> Been with you for two days. I ain't seen it. I'm so happy. And you, too. I haven't seen you smile, either. Oh. Well, what a relief it is. Man. We got that truth. And you're blessed. It's the truth you wanted. Yes, yes. 